This is the Raspberry Pi Pico, the first microcontroller from Raspberry Pi. So unlike on the Raspberry Pi 4, 400 or 0, there is no operating system, there is no Linux. Uh, this thing is a microcontroller like Arduino, for example, where you just program it with single code that you want it to run. This thing is actually programmed with Python and I think also C++, uh, you can somehow program it in C++. It is more powerful than Arduino and it is not as powerful as ESP32 and some other microcontrollers, but still, this thing costs just $4 and you can do a lot with this thing and that's what I want to do in this video. I want to show you what you can do with this thing, just, you know, play and see what's possible. When you buy the Raspberry Pi Pico, it comes as it is, just a board in a piece of foil, there are no headers, so that's something you have to buy on your own and solder. Fortunately, that's very inexpensive and that's very simple to do, you just have to measure the proper amount of headers, break it like so, and now you can put those headers in a breadboard because it's a lot easier to solder, you can add the headers on the other side, and then the breadboard holds everything together and you can simply just solder that. Soldering, as always, very easy, you know, gold pins are not really that hard to solder, but I still can't get the PCB cleaning method really that okay and it's a little bit sticky, uh, probably because of the flux, but right now let's connect it to the computer and start programming. After taking a quick look at their website, I have to say I really enjoy it. It's a really nice website. It's easy to navigate, there is everything really nicely explained, you have some examples and you have the documentation that I have opened here. And right there you can read about everything, about this microcontroller, about the custom chip, because right here we have the chip made by Raspberry Pi in the UK. And right here we have a very simple animation that explains everything that you have to do. Uh, so we have to hold this button and while holding the button we have to connect it to the computer. And then we have to download something and put it on the Raspberry Pi. So let's try to do this. And I think I have to just drag and drop it here. Before I started working on this video, everyone was using Raspberry Pi. I will use my map. There's some work with the terminals, copy and paste. And now I know. Okay, I found a better solution. Forget about installing everything with terminal. Just install Tony. It's very easy to use. You can easily program uh, everything you need in here. It's easy to navigate, not a lot of options. It's great for beginners. The only one tricky thing is that you have to change right here in the bottom from normal Python to micro Python in order to program your Pico board and here it is blinking as I want it to. This thing is called a Night Rider. It's just an advanced version of Blink and with Python it is really easy to do this thing. Just 11 lines of code and you have this. We can control the speed of those lights obviously so it can go slower it can go faster and with just few extra lines of code together that 16 lines you can make it go both ways like so pretty easy i recently bought this cute little nema 11 stepper motor with silent driver so why not to connect that to the pico so there is my third project nema 11 stepper motor very small one uh, the stepper motor driver, the Pico, and here is the power supply. And once I connect that, you can see that stepper motor is running smoothly. I was able to achieve a pretty decent speed when it comes to this motor. And of course, it is totally not connected to the microcontroller. Fast microcontroller does not mean fast stepper motor. It all depends on the stepper motor itself, on the motor driver that you are using, on the voltage, and properly setting up the potentiometer on the stepper motor driver. And because the temperature sensor is actually built into the RP2040 chip, we can read it without any additional sensors. Just few lines of Python code and we can see the temperature in the terminal. I just thought that it may be interesting to actually compare Arduino versus Pico. I will write the same programs, one in Python for Pico and in C++ for Arduino. I want to add a button to start those programs at exactly the same moment and in for loop I will do just a lot of mathematical calculations and we'll see how faster is the Pico compared to Arduino. 
All right, so after spending way, way too much time on figuring out how to do what I want to do, especially for the Arduino, because there is some weird optimization thing going on in the Arduino ID, I think it should work now, everything should work. And the result is not so obvious. Here is a button connected to both of those microcontrollers. Here is the pull-up resistor. And once I press this button, both of them will start the same calculations. It's actually uh, just, you know, some random stuff uh, with math in for loop for I think 500 times and once calculations are finished you will see this LED right there it's not really that well visible light up and this LED right here so are you ready? so as you can see it's almost instant so let's take a look at the serial monitors so here is the result for the Pico and it's in microseconds and here is the result for the Arduino and that's the result of those calculations 450 does not mean anything. So as you can see, the difference is not really that big. And now here's the question, why? And the answer is Python. Of course, Pico is three or maybe even four times faster than the Arduino. You can overclock it. It has two cores, but actually we are using only one core right here. But Python is really slow compared to C++. And of course, you can program the Pico in C++ or C. Uh, I'm not going to do this today because I have no idea how and I want to learn Python for some reasons. Um, but yeah, when it comes to actually computing C++ versus Python on two different microcontrollers, it's almost the same, the difference is not really that huge. I connected the Pico and the Arduino to both of the channels of the oscilloscope. The yellow line is the Arduino and the blue line is Pico. So let's take a look at the single sequence and as you can see, Arduino signal is a bit faster. The high state takes about four microseconds and the low state is just a little bit longer. I, I'm not sure why, but for the Pico, it's like eight microseconds for the high and the low state. So this time Arduino is just a bit faster. Let's zoom out a bit. And as you can see, I'm not sure why does it happen, but the signal on the Pico is not really that stable. Maybe that's because of the Python. I don't know. I will put all of the Python programs that I used in this video in the first comment under this video, so check it out if you need it. And I will definitely play more with the Pico and hopefully create some cool projects in the near future, so definitely subscribe if you don't miss that. And that's it for this video, don't forget to like, comment and everything. See you in the next one, bye!